manifest in this service. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, we give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. For answer prayer, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. In this service, God will wipe away somebody's tears. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever has been troubling your heart, it will turn into a testimony. I say it will turn into a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are saying amen, make it better. Congratulations, please get seated. Engaging the power of violent prayer for instant healing. There are people that love praying gentle prayer. But there are some things gentle prayer cannot put in your hand. Do you need to shout for God to hear you? Why can't you just say softly, softly? Sipri, sipri, sipri. <laughs> Should I tell you something? Anytime you are praying as if uh, you don't want anybody to hear you, you are afraid. You are afraid. You are afraid. When your prayer lacks aggression, your life will lack progression. When your prayer lacks what? Your life will lack what? There is a level of aggression you need to experience the change you desire. Change doesn't just jump on people. Anyone that wants to see change must apply some relevant force and that force must be aggressive in this kingdom there is no gentle faith anywhere so if you are looking for gentle faith God doesn't have a gentle one to give you. The only faith that can guarantee an answer is a violent faith. Now, is there any gentle fight? <laughs> is there any gentle fight? No, what scripture say? Fight! The good fight! There is no gentle fight. Sickness is a confrontation that requires violent resistance. No wonder scripture says, resist the devil and he shall do what? Flee. When you resist him, he will not insist. No wonder Jesus said, I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary shall not be able to resist nor gainsay. So when you resist him, he cannot insist. When the enemy attacks you with sickness, he doesn't come gentle. He comes fiery. He comes with a daring force. So you give it a violent approach.
So any sickness that wants to terminate you, you can terminate it. Any sickness that wants to eliminate you, you can eliminate it. If you are saying amen, say better, amen. Any sickness that is hindering you, you can puncture their pants. That amen is not good. You are saying as if you are afraid. The only place Satan has is the one you give to him. No wonder scripture says, give no place to the devil. Your body is not designed for his habitation. Know you not that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The place you gave to him is the one he will occupy. But the moment you begin to react violently, scripture says, as soon as they hear of me, hear me, that sickness needs to hear you. He wants to hear you. He needs to hear you and he wants to hear you. In your voice is fire. In your voice is power. So when you speak, they must obey you. When you speak, they cannot resist it. The place the enemy is occupying is the one you gave him permission. That's why every one of us, we are the gate man of our life. You are the gate man of your head. You are the gate man of your body. Scripture says, guard your heart. It's not only your heart, guard everywhere. You guard your eye, guide your mouth, guide your ear, guide your body. With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You are the gate man of your body, you are the gate man of your destiny. So what you didn't allow to pass will not pass. What you didn't give entrance will not enter. Ephesians 4 verse 7 But unto every man every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Verse 8 Wherefore he said he ascended upon high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. There is something you have that can put the devil at bay. You keep him permanently outside. No vacancy. When when you see no vacancy, it means that there is no chance. Are you what I'm saying now? The devil does not decide when he enters your life. You put a permanent wall of separation. put a permanent wall of separation. But for you to stay permanently in health, you need the element of violent faith. Everybody here has faith too. Scripture says God has given to you a measure of faith. Faith is our currency for living. It's our currency in destiny that cannot be exhausted. Faith is faith, whether you are in Gabon or you are in Ghana or you enter Togo or you enter Sokoto. Faith is faith. You have a measure of faith. And as you trade with your measure, it keeps increasing in strength, in authority, in command. Faith is faith. So every time you engage faith, it answers to you. It must deliver the product. Like I said before, there is no gentle fight. There is no what? Gentle fight. Scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, a good fight is the one that the outcome is determined. The outcome of a fight, of your fight of faith has already been determined. 
like I will always explain, a good lawyer can tell you whether you have a bad case or you have a good case. That's why they will ask you, tell us everything about this, your case. After you must have finished explaining, they say, oh God, you have a bad case, so let's go and look for the man and negotiate so that you have a soft landing. But if we decide to proceed on this matter, th those are sincere lawyers, so it's not all these charge and bail lawyers. They say, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll address the matter, we'll address the matter. You pay your 150. Don't worry, we'll, we'll, I will see the judge, I will see the judge. They postpone. You, you are paid another 150. Oh. I will see the judge, I will see the judge. You are paid another 150. Those are hungry lawyers. That they are white shirt has turned to make. And they have sweet grammar. Their grammar is too polish. Praise God. But if you meet decent lawyers, they just tell you, you don't have a case here. Let's negotiate with the man. Those ones are not hungry lawyers. They are feeding well. Are you know what I'm saying now? They are not looking for what to collect from you. They will tell you your case is a good case or your case is a bad case. Fight the good fight means you're on a winning edge. Faith gives you a winning edge. Faith gives you a triumphant edge. Faith says you are not coming out a loser. You are coming out triumphant. Faith says you are coming out with your desired victory. But you must stand to fight. In the fight of faith, there is no probability. Will it work? Will it not work? No. The outcome has already been defined even before you started. The outcome has been what? Defined. It has been defined. It has been determined before you started. So the enemy sizes you up to know if he can impose it on you, whether you will buy it. You know, Satan is a hawker. Just like these children that say granite every day. Will you buy? Will you buy? Will you buy? Sickness is hawked. I remember Papa said something one day that uh, if the enemy make mistake and throw malaria on him. I will just come out from his window. If he sees any unbeliever walking on the road, he say, go and jump on that man. <laughs> Are you here? What I'm <laughs> Why? Because he knows it's not meant for me. Sickness is not meant for you. Yeah. I say sickness is not meant for you. Yeah. Should I shock you now? You don't have the capacity to be sick. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You don't have the capacity to be sick. So anytime you say, I have malaria, say, where is the grace? Ask the person, where is the grace for malaria? Are you not saying now? Because what you have is what you, you have the capacity to bring. Do you have capacity to be sick? You don't have capacity for sickness. Because you don't have the genetic drive. You are not wired. Your gene does not carry what ferments sickness. So you don't have the capacity for affliction. You don't have the capacity for infirmity. So when you are saying, I have, <laughs> you don't buy products when you'll be your own. I have. I have. 
When you say you have, it means that you have capacity to generate it. So you, you are not saying that your body is generating sickness. So you are a distributor of infirmity. But that will not be your portion. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So you resist the devil. First Peter chapter 5, let's read verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. Satan is a walker about. Pium, pium, pium. Jump from one place to another. Seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, now. Huh? Whom resist steadfast in what? Knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world, resist in the faith, which means you must issue a word of resistance. I like you to hear this. Faith is confrontational. Issue a word of resistance. Resist him. We have in the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore, we speak. We are not just talking, we are speaking. And when you speak, it will stick. Your words are not permitted to return void. So when you speak, it must stick. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. So I'm not just talking, I'm insisting. My word is binding. God said, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. So you are not guessing whether it will work or whether it will not work. It must come back with the desire proof and answer. But you must be conscious of what you are saying. If you don't understand your spiritual status and authority, you will be afraid of even what you are saying. Will it work? Will it work? Jesus said, said to one, go and he go. And to another, come and he come. And the centurion said, speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. Every time you speak, expect an answer. Every time you pray in faith, expect an answer. Every time you declare in faith, expect an answer. Expect an answer. So the violence of faith makes us to understand that we are redeemed, licensed to declare what we want to see. Faith is a pressing faith. And without the press, there is no access and there is no rest. A classic example is the paralytic man <laughs> with a roof tearing faith. In Mark chapter 2, let's read it. Mark chapter 2, we'll read from verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come now unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the passy laid. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, your action proves whether you have faith or you no know get. They needed it in say, man, if there is no open door, there must be open roof. 
so they tear the roof. Some thy sin be forgiven thee. Verse 6 now. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts as they are in church. Why does this man does speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, Verse 11 now, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. Verse 12 now, And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> Faith triggers something. Every time God sees your faith, it responds with power. Every time God sees your faith demonstrated by your action, it responds with what? Power. So power flow in the direction of faith. When faith is triggered by your action, this is what you want to see. God said, this is the kind of people I like to meet. So you must press for yourself. The woman with the issue of blood came her own. Scripture says she came in a press. If only I could touch. Should I tell you something? As everybody is seated here now, God sees everybody's heart. I, the Lord, such at the heart. And I examine the rate to reward every man. Faith brings reward. Faith attracts reward. I, the Lord, such at the heart. And I examine the rate to reward every man. To reward every man. To reward every man. To compensate every man. To bless every man. So you must press for your own reward. Likewise again, the centurion met Jesus. I'm a man under authority. I know what it means to say to one, go and he go. And to another, come and he come. He says, speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. Should I tell you something? Faith is stronger than feeling. Pastor, I'm feeling headache. Faith say, don't feel, believe. Are you know what I'm saying now? Do you know you can feel and feel wrongly? Just like you can have emotion for the wrong person. Two of us. Yeah, but I'm feeling something for him. You be winch. <laughs> you can feel something for the devil. Oh, you don't know? You can feel and feel wrongly. Faith is not feeling. <laughs> Faith is what? Faith is beyond feeling. That's why anytime you say... Pastor, I'm feeling headache. You are making power impotent concerning your life. Faith is beyond feeling. Faith is what? Beyond feeling. Faith is beyond feeling. So you must despise your feeling and go for what you want. Concerning Jesus, scripture said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And he despised the shame. There are some people here that can't endure mockery. The way this person has been talking about me. Eh? My moral just go low. Come, let me dash you small. Let me borrow you moral. If we go by feeling, we won't serve God. Oh. 
Because people that will hurt you, they are not outside. They are inside church. The way this person has been troubling me, my morale just go low. I can't preach again. No, I lie you. In fact, that's even when I will preach fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> Likewise, faith is beyond feeling. If you look at feeling, nothing will work in your life. In fact, feeling acts like an invisible barrier for the healing that wants to take place. I remember one day I finished praying for somebody. He said, Pastor, it's like after the prayer, the whole thing just, the thing just begins to burn more. I said, get out now, you devil! <laughs> what you are trying to tell me is that uh, I increased the trouble. <laughs> get out now, you devil! <laughs> As I shouted, it's like he went somewhere and relaxed and he recovered. <laughs> I knew that the sickness was looking for a fast route of escape. Can you come and tell me that the prayer I prayed didn't work? <laughs> you are mad. <laughs> I, did I pray in my name? No, I prayed in the name of Jesus. And I'm, I know with all certainty that it must work. What thing soever you ask when you pray, believe. Come on. So if I hear anybody say that, hey, Pastor, that thing you prayed about is still doing me. <laughs> you are looking for trouble. So faith requires a pressing beyond our feeling so that you can be able to assess your healing. If you look at your feeling, you will miss your healing. If you look at your feeling, you will miss your healing. Your feeling will be telling you it's not working. No, there is no sign. The thing is still spending me, the way it's spending me is a lie. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish and prosper. So it must work. I say it must work. I say it must work. So you should expect it to work. So you expect it to work. Feeling can nullify healing. So take your eyes off the feeling. Focus your eyes on the healing. They looked unto him and they were lighting. And their faces were no more ashamed. They were not looking at their feeling. So if you are feeling contrary, keep speaking. Tell your neighbor, keep speaking. Keep speaking. Faith does not keep quiet in the face of situations. Keeps speaking. It keeps crying out. When you are silent, you are confirming your you are confirming your pain. You keep speaking. You keep declaring. David said, "I shall not die, but live, glorify the Lord. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die." So every disease tormenting you will die. Any power sponsoring affliction for you will die. Yeah. So when you are tired of the sickness, <laughs> you will voice out by speaking. When you are tired of the sickness, you will cry out by speaking. Keep speaking. P keep placing a demand on God. You keep placing a demand on God. You keep declaring what you want to see. You keep enforcing. You hear me? The more the declaration, the more the confidence. Your confidence is watered when you begin to keep quiet. But when you say it before, you say it again. You say it again. You say it again. For your faith to answer, you must be persistent. You keep saying. You keep saying. You keep saying. If Satan didn't hear the first one, he must hear the second one. You keep saying.
blind Matthias got the attentions of Jesus, of Jesus not with one cry. He cried and cried again. He cried and cried again. He cried and cried again. He said, please, tell that man to come. I tell that man to come. So God feels our faith every time we declare. Like I said before, there is no gentle faith. We only have violent faith. If the woman with the issue of blood could express her own violence to, by pressing where they say she should not press, she too, she knew that she was not supposed to cross, but she crossed. And God answered that. God will answer you. Yes. In summary, ignore medical reports. Many are held captive in their mind by medical reports. It's just a report. It's not a conclusion. What did they call it? What did they call it? It's a fact, not a the truth. It's a medical report, not a medical judgment. Many see medical report as medical judgment. The doctor didn't pass a sentence upon you. He's only telling you, this is what we are seeing. But God can change it. Are you wrong saying now? Can God change it? God can change it. Isaiah 53 verse 1, he says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who has believed our reports? Who has believed our reports? They checked Papa and said that, uh, Sir, from all indication, you have a high blood pressure. He says your own that is high. <laughs> it's your own that is high. I don't have high blood pressure. You have a. They wanted to give him. He said, No, I don't have. You have. Are you know what I'm saying? You don't have the capacity to be sick because you are being redeemed. So it's like a, you have high blood pressure. He said, no, you have high blood pressure. I don't have high blood pressure. So he rejected it immediately. Immediately. And Jesus said, if thou canst believe, Thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. Man can be limited. Doctors can be limited. But God is unlimited. God is unlimited. I say God is unlimited. I say God is unlimited. Base your action. Base your faith on the word. Even if they say it doesn't have cure. Is God short of ideas on what to do? God can cure. God can heal. God can cure. God can heal. God can cure. God can heal. So look at every challenge as one that must change. As one that must be leveled. As one that you must speak and it must turn around. Are you what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. There is no terminal sickness. Every terminal sickness has a bus stop. And the word will give it a bus stop. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. The word can give it a bus stop. The word can give it a bus stop. I remember, I just remember something now. There was one of our members that came one time. He said that um, um, the son only had one testis. You understand what I'm saying now? That they wanted to go and do surgery to correct it. I said, Who's surgery? I said, Now, nah, doctor, they give testes. <laughs> yes, now. Nah. Is what asking? Now, nah, doctor, they give testes. <laughs> so I said, You don't need surgery. Go and drop that money in the, as a seed. So I blessed the oil. I said, Be rubbing it in there. Just be rubbing it in there. No prayer. I didn't ask you to pray. They asked you to pray. I said, No. Just be rubbing it in there. There is creative power in the anointing. For by him all things were made. 
visible and invisible in less than a month the thing takes shape the thing takes shape oh. and she didn't know when the thing took shape all of a sudden ah not too The Holy Ghost is a performer. And I see God correcting what needs to be corrected in somebody's life. Rise up to your feet. Sickness is afraid of your faith. So you must react against it now. You are going to pray whatever is threatening my life, my health, Whatever is attacking my life, attacking my health, by the anointing, I bring judgment upon you. I break your hold right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your voice. Declare violently this affliction, this torment, expire. In the name of Jesus, I set you on fire. I invoke the judgment of God upon you. I curse your root right now. In kraketo si zoze, je kuka prekote so, in kake kroto susu na keketeke, je kute i karade si yonta, lampre dodo le kujede, rezuza brekete. Every attack, every affliction, I judge you right now. I curse your roots. I command you to dry up. I curse your roots. I command you to dry up. I curse your roots. I command you to dry up. I curse your roots. I command you to dry up. I judge the roots of every affliction. Lekaro shitopa. Father, by the anointing, Holy Ghost, I judge every affliction. In the name of Jesus, I judge every affliction. Lerondo, Shekonte, Zesu Zeri, Katebre, Dizozea, Lamperen, De Gloro, Shagadara, Rezane, Klikeri, Ketezozea, Jekukabre, Keterionda, Meka kutu zezo labasha. Le kuke prekete lo zizo labasha. Reketeri angegero sido labasha. Every affliction. Every afflictor. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Powers. Sponsoring affliction. You are cursed in the name of Jesus. Every affliction, hear my voice. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lempeteli rando zekle intradene zizona. Jesus ekikarata. The root of every affliction is cursed. Merondo sute bredi aba. Merondo soto preli aba. Jeru asi kare kote nozi zore kata. Reketeria de lelusha galarota. Every affliction and every sponsor, you are cursed in the name of Jesus. La porta neneno jekukare eterete. Reklopet ranido janus yaketa. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. This communion goes with a presence. It announces the fullness of the presence of God. It is written, Whatsoever my heavenly Father 
as not planted shall be uprooted. As you partake of this communion, whatever represents a manifestation of sickness in your body internally, they are flushed out. I say again, 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 they are flushed out. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. as I pray. Psalm 91 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord He is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust his truth shall be my shield and my buckler I will not be afraid of the terror by night not for the arrow that flyeth by day. Amen. Not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Amen. Not for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Amen. A thousand shall fall at my side. Amen. And ten thousand at my right hand. Amen. But it shall not come near me. Amen. Now verse 8. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see. The reward of the wicked. Any arrow flying because of you. Let the vengeance of the blood answer them. Any arrow of affliction programmed because of you. Let the blood of Jesus answer against them with vengeance. Let the blood of Jesus retaliate with vengeance. Let the blood of Jesus cause it to backfire with vengeance. Whoever is calling your name with any medium to afflict you by the blood of Jesus, I command it to backfire. By the blood of Jesus, I command it to go back by fire. Whoever is chanting your name for affliction, by the blood. Let them wear the garments of affliction. By the blood of Jesus. Let them wear the garments of reproach. The evil they desire to see take place for you. Let it go back and answer against them. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus, their wicked desires will backfire. They will eat their shame. They will wear their reproach. If you are saying amen, say better amen. They will be victims of the evil desire they have against you. In Jesus' name we pray. So shall it be. So shall it be. I decree your exemption. From every device of wickedness. 
I decree your exemption from every enchantment and sorcery. I decree your exemption from every conspiracy of hell. That wicked plan will not come to pass against you. That wicked design will not take place in your life. That wicked design will not take place for your family. Whoever desires your heart, let angels give them terrible injury. Let the angels of God give them sudden destruction. Into their own very calamity, let them fall. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So shall it be. Amen. You are exempted. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't have capacity for sickness. Amen. So your body is exempted from sickness. Amen. Whatever is tormenting your head is leaving you right now. Amen. They come under fire and they are leaving you now. Amen. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Go protected. Go defended. Your body will not know sickness again. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so.